If there was a spot that honoured you, what would the phrase be that you think you'd like to see there? I think in my own life, uh, I'm a winemaker. That's what I decided I want to do. And the most important thing is that if you make something out of nature, you try to link that to the influences of nature. And that's why I always focus, actually what I said in the beginning now, the focus was to get site-specificness into the wine through the vineyard and to learn about that. There's still a lot to learn, still a lot we don't understand, but if you don't start, you, it will take you years before you are there. So that was my goal. And uh, I think uh, I have over the years also inspired other people to do it, to work and focus in that direction. So the future of the South African wine industry is in the cradle of image. An image cannot exist in wine if it is not linked intelligently with the influence of nature on it. So in other words, site-specific wines is very, very important. And your opinion on nature in concert? Nature in concert. It tells it all. Hi, my name is Johan de Wett and today I'll be talking about the influence that my dad had on the Wetzelf and future generations on the farm. So I think first of all we should talk about the influence that he had on soil before we reach anything else. It's just for the, his work on soil rather. So when he was young he really did a lot of carting work on different soil types for different varietals, especially Chardonnay of course. So we put a lot of like clonal selections on certain soil types, on different types in Robertson, like clay, limestone soils, rocky soils, um, even down to the sandstone soils, you know, so it was quite a diverse soil grouping that we did and carted. So we could figure out which clones specifically work very well on certain types of soils and the style of wines that you get. So firstly that to me was very important and long term a way that we should look at the, the wines and the, the, which clones you will plant where on the certain areas of the farm. Then if you look at just sort of a wine making perspective, you know, I mean we planted the first Chardonnay in South Africa, really focusing on the varietal Chardonnay and also some of the other white varietals like Riesling and Sauvignon Blanc. And then reds, you know, so we really, you know, in his time put a lot of work into improving the quality not only on the farm but also in the area. So I think we, he did quite a lot of work in that perspective. So the influence that my dad has on me and my brother as people in the, on the estate, I think it's, we are both quite honoured I think and very lucky to have somebody like him with so much knowledge on vineyards, uh, on wine, on soil types, on pretty much every aspect in the industry so it's, you know, it helps me a lot being on the farm we look at always at new clonal selections, new sites to plant on, new ways of pruning, new ways of everything and same with my brother being in the cellar you know I mean to be able to make to, or to put Chardonnays out there, Pinot Noirs, Bavlis, even Reds um, of top top quality wines and always having a reference to go back to and say you know, this is what I think and this is what I think you should be doing is helps us a lot in the long run and I think that's the biggest um, influence that it has on us. I think the thing that I enjoy most, uh, or at least that I think the family enjoys most with my dad is once or twice or even more sometimes a week we'll open blind the international wine from anywhere in the world and we'll discuss the wine and we always play the game of where is it from, who made it, how old is it and all this and I think the amount of knowledge that you build up by tasting these wines blind on the international arena just gives you a great edge in the way you look at your wines in the cellar. So I think that's what we as a family enjoy the most with him on weekends, weekdays, you know, it's just a nice part of the, the industry.
We're here with Dampy Bailey, and Dampy, we're honouring um, some of the big daddies of the wine industry. And uh, if you can give us your uh, memories of Danny DeVette. Yes, I have known Danny DeVette a very long time. When I was started at Farmer's Winery in my early days at Farmer's Winery, we still used to buy wine from DeVetsov, mostly from his father in those days, because Danny's a bit younger than what I am. But I remember him very well because we were together on various wine functions, wine wine uh, events and things like that. And then he took over from Lawrence Jonker uh, as chairman of Veritas. And I can remember he organized that we took the Veritas Gold and Double Gold to London to uh, exhibit it there to the people in London. It was a fantastic time. And I can never forget that we were on our way to uh, from London. We were going to Amsterdam to show the wines. And so he took us there to the I think it was in, uh, in um, the airport, there's a Harrods sort of a bar there, an oyster bar, oyster and champagne bar. And he took us in there and champagne for everyone, oysters for everyone, but I don't, I'm allergic to, to seafood. So he got one of the waiters, to uh, sort of Italian guy, to go over to the hamburger hut to bring me a an hamburger and I was sitting there in this very fancy oyster champagne bar having a hamburger like a real burraklong, you know. And that of course he's never forgotten that either to rub it in whenever we're together. And then also Danny took over from uh, Lawrence as chairman of, of Veritas and eventually uh, when he uh, finished I took over from Danny. So the three of us have had a, a very good relationship over the years and trying to uphold the same things that we started out to, to do with Veritas.